Hello, in this section we will be talking about Rigify. So the first thing you want to consider is to eliminate anything else that is not going to be rigged. Next, you're going to shift A and then select a basic human rig. Then you're going to scale it in object mode. Press S to scale it. And what we're looking for here is to align the level of the hip first of all, so that every other bone will derive from the distance from that hip bone. That means that we will um, delete this side first, this um, right side, uh, talking about the perspective of the rig, the right side is gone, we are only left with the left side of the body, all of the left side bones, and let's check if everything is set in place. Now the next thing I usually do in my workflow is to align the chest, next the legs. Please notice that as I am moving everything here, I try to move them with the joints all together using the lasso selection. I use the lasso instead of the box selection because when I release the button it is already selected and it lets me go into manipulation mode immediately. That's why it's just a pre personal preference that I do. So the next thing we want to do here is to align the shoulders as such. Right now I'm going to go to the top view so that I can move back and forth in the y-axis and you will always want to leave just a slight bent so that the angle for the twisting it's calculated when the rig is generated towards or favoring that angle so that's very important you need to have just a slight bent in the shoulders and also the elbows as well as the hand so here we go again top view grabbing this. Now the next step I will do is try to put all of the finger bones correctly aligned and for that I use a really uh, common trick which is to set the local alignment to normal. When I do this all of the fingers are pointing to their origin normals and thus it will always point forward as we are looking in the screen. So that is very useful because that way your finger will not get twisted. It is very important that you have a straight line aligned bones and for that you can also press Ctrl Alt A selecting the very last bone and then selecting the very first bone Ctrl Alt A will align them to the last active selection and that's how you get this. So let's continue, I'm going to grab all of those um, and then I'm going to manipulate them so that it could fit inside the hand. So the idea here is that we're going to have all of the, uh, how do you say this in English, Phal phalanges, phalanges, oh gosh, the name of the finger bones. Um, so the pinky, the pointer, uh, the thumb, everything will be inside of the mesh of the hand. And when you move this, um, try not to rotate it too off offset from the previous bone, otherwise it will break and the script will not work. So it is very important that you always check your angles, always move your, your fingers according to the uh, first selection, or rather the first bone in this case, as you can see right here. So there's no way to do this. Um, automatically you have to do this by hand um, it takes around nine to ten minutes to do it so but once you have the first uh, left hand already created or already placed it is very easy to just mirror it now this special bone is used to rig uh, breasts in female characters and what I tend to use it for is to have the weights distribute from the armpit and the rib I believe this is a very good bone so that you can have your weights distributed in that way. Next, select all of these bones, okay, and right click and press symmetrize. And what Blender is going to do is going to create a mirror copy of all of these bones to the correct angle to the right side. But not only that, it will also rename them correctly. So right click, select symmetrize and then you have your full body again this is what we want alright take your time and check uh, the toes 
the the bones behind the toes need to be um, widened enough so that you can have your controllers for the footstep okay so let's go to the neck right now I'm going to again uh, select the uh, head bone make sure you really select the head bone because uh, inside the head bone is hidden the face the facial root bone so make sure that you position your neck following the root of the previous bone and also make sure that your head bone surpasses the height of your original mesh head this is so that you you can see the controllers later on when they are generated in the rig so most of the people get um, kind of um, confused about placing the correct bones here in the facial area but I hope that you find this video very useful so that you can have this as a general guide because I've, I have previously adapted this Rigify facial rig even for anime characters, for humanoid characters, for even animal characters and they have worked all marvelously. So the trick here is to have uh, X symmetry active as you saw previously on that red arrow before at the top right um, side of the screen and what we want to do here is to make sure that every bone is exactly on the on the peripheral um, mesh okay you don't want the bone to be too outside of the mesh and you don't want the bone to be inside too inside of the mesh so there's one thing I do want to uh, mention and that is that you have parameters and this I didn't know until uh, some days ago uh, you do have parameters for the what we call the heat ray length to assign weights okay this is a complex term but bear with me so every bone before you create the rig has this specialized um, distance so that it can pick up vertices vertices around the bones so that's very important it is not shown in this video but if you're interested I can do another video a very short video by the way or post post the picture in the community tab I really do apologize for the noises of everything that you're listening in this video um, but I guess traffic it's really heavy today so this is another very important part you do want to place your bones near to the to each vertex of your eyebrows and your eyelashes so that when the time to deform comes every vertex will be correctly distributed between the weights of the bones so that's marvelous now we have already the face in place let's activate the hair back now select the rig in object mode this running man will give you access to generate the rig button and as you can see if you did not apply uh, control A apply scale then your rig will not be scaled correctly but then you can copy the original um, size that you intended and paste it here so that you can have it equal to the same uh, size of your character so the next thing you want to do is to rename everything accordingly because you're going to have a lot of meshes and you don't want and you don't want to mistake whatever you select um, and it's very very advisable that you name your objects at scene level and also as object levels from there you can select your mesh shift click the rig control P assign automatic weights now you can select the rig press tab enter pose mode and now you can test if your elements are correctly binded to your rig and one thing that you can also do is select the joystick controllers and press S to scale. Now the right, the cool thing is that you can move to the right and then it will crisp. If you move to the left, it will extend the fingers. Uh, most of the people that I talk to all, um, tell me that they don't like this kind of controllers, but I think they are very useful because those are indeed uh, joysticks they are uh, created so that you can scale left or right and that's the way you can control the the crisp or the extension of the of the fingers you can also press r to rotate them as i am doing as well to this controller to this foot controller so next thing is that you will find 
that your rig has not rigged your eyes properly. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to select the eyes and then I'm going to shift click the rig. Then I'm going to press Ctrl P automatic weights so that the weights of the rig will get assigned to the to the eyes. And as you can see, they do not uh, work as intended. This should not be happening. What it should be happening is that the, the eyes are left untouched by the controllers. But we can fix this. Select the rig, press tab, enter edit mode, and now we're going to unveil the layer of the bones that have the controllers for the eyes, which is this one right here. Okay, make sure you only have that one selected. From there, you can just get near the eye control, or rather the bone, which is this one right here. And you're, going, you're going to recognize it because it's, it's got this little pole pointing upwards, this little bone pointing upwards. So you want to uh, copy that name which is M-C-H-I-L, and then select the I, enter edit mode, select all of the vertices, and then go to the vertex properties of that object, which in this case, they uh, both eyes are together. So we're going to create a new vertex group for that because we don't see anything associated with the name that we previously copied. Let's uh, delete all of these groups because none of them are going to affect the eyes. We only want this specific group to affect the eye. So we're going to uh, have the weight to 1 and then assign. That means that it will get 100% assigned. Now press Ctrl I to invert the selection to the other eye. Let's create another vertex group, which will be the right side. In this case, we're going to paste the same name, except that we're going to replace the last letter for the letter R. And then we're going to assign, since we already have our... Um, right eye selected. And then you can switch to weight paint to see if 100% is assigned. You're going to see your eye color red. Switch between the vertex groups and then you will see each one of them 100% assigned. So now let's go back again to our rig controls. And for that we're going to select rig. We're going to go to object mode and then we're going to activate all of these layers that you can see right here which represent all of this controller visibility controllers for the layers that you see over here now press post mode tab all post mode and then the eyes do not move why is this we did everything correctly but we were missing just one single step and that is to make sure that the eyes that we selected previously were marked to be the formers so let's make sure that the eyes have the armature modifier active indeed the vertex the vertex groups are active as well they are assigned everything is cool everything is working there so the last step like i mentioned before is to enter the rig and make sure that those bones that we were that we previously selected are deforming correctly so activate the layer and now you can close up to this bone again m c h i uh, l Select it, and if you come here to the bone icon over the properties, you're going to see that this is not marked deform. Please mark it deform. Okay, from there on, all of the vertex groups associated with this bone will deform accordingly, which in this case are the eyes. We assigned 100% deformation only to these bones. And that's it. You can go back to object mode, activate all of your controllers, go back to pose mode, and now, sure enough, your character can finally move his eyes. Now, when you try to manipulate the eye, which is very important, you need to be aware of what they are deforming at the time that you have um, initially created the rig. So it is clear that you need to go back to that specific vertex group for in this case uh, we're going to find the eyelashes or the um, eyelids group and then we're going to paint some more weights to influentiate the vertices around this for that you can use the tools here from there on you need to correct the weights one by one or wherever you encounter difficult areas by weight painting in the weight paint mode